enough for now. Thank you all for coming and joining me. Thank you all for being at the premiere and checking out the new music video. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you all for being at the premiere and checking out the new music video. Yeah. So, um, um, okay. So I'm getting some comments here. Um, so yeah, so let's see. So, uh, Everyone who's here, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for uh, showing up to the premiere. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Is the sound all right? Uh, could everyone hear the guitar okay? Uh, let me know in the comments here if there's any issues with sound or um, uh, if, if there's any you know other technical issues going on. I wanna try to avoid them. But uh, please, if you have any questions about the video, about playing, about anything, uh, just let me know and um, um, and I'd be uh, happy to answer any questions. But basically, let me talk a little bit about what we just saw. And uh, again, thank you all for being there. Thank you all for being here. And I'm going to check out all the comments in just a moment. But I'm just sort of noodling around, rehearsing, practicing. You know, I'm just warming up here. So um, thank you all for humoring me. Uh, it's a good way to get started before we actually, you know, get into the actual meat of what we're doing. So uh, anyway, this video means a lot to me. Uh, this track means a lot to me. Um, it's the first track on the, on the upcoming record, Ideological Explosions of the Absurd Hero. Um, and it's, uh, the track is, of course, as you know, it's like Christ, no came dump truck. And um, it's a very dystopic concept. It's dealing with concepts of behavioral mod modification, manipulation, and um, uh, sort of a various other dystopic themes. And this entire record focuses around the duality of, you know, uh, mankind and um, uh, various forms of obsession, paranoia, and things like that, which you'll see exemplified in some of these videos as they continue. Um, uh, but um, as it is, um, uh, this this track itself is the first track on the record. And it's kind of like, it functions almost like an overture because we have a concept here and the entire record is, based on, and yes, I like to call it a record because it will be vinyl and CD, but uh, it's based on this uh, poem that is, you hear some of the spoken word in this video and the spoken word is all from the poem. Um, and then there is um, uh, a, um, uh, 
art component, which you saw in the video. There's the visual arts, and then there's the theatrical performance art elements. And I put all these things together as a multidisciplinary artist, someone who has a background in art, music, philosophy, literature, and things of that nature. I put all these things together. So this is a you know full uh, multimedia project. And um, as far as that goes, um, this this. This, like I said, is the first track on the record. It sort of is like an overture in that you hear a lot of different things going on. It starts with sort of this big orchestral film score style, style thing, and it goes into more of a fusion-y thing and then kind of goes into um, like a metal section. And then at the end, you have the orchestra and the hard rock and metal um, and all that. So it all comes together. And then it just sort of starts the record, which then continues from there, and you'll get these themes reoccurring. So this one sort of announces the record in a way. And I think it's, uh, I think it works very appropriately as the opener. So um, I was really excited about getting this one out there. This concept for this video has been with me for a long time and I've been really eager to get it out there to see this thing through. And so I'm very happy with, um, with it so far. And I hope that you guys are, and I hope that you guys put some nice comments in the comment section, watch it like a zillion times. Like let's keep watching it because the views help and put some likes if you don't mind. I mean, I hate to be, uh, I feel like a little bit like Oliver Twist here asking for some more, but if you can, it does help. So I appreciate all my friends helping me out with that one. So, um, but yeah, and thank you all for being here. Thank you all for uh, showing up to this thing and uh, checking out the premiere. I've been, you know, like I said, super excited for everyone to see it. Um, and uh, basically, um, if you have any questions, let me take a look in the uh, chat here and see if there's any questions. See, uh, I want to say hello to everyone. Um, so thank you, Skeet create. Uh, I appreciate that. That's very kind. Uh, hi, mom. Uh, hi, Greg. Uh, hi, Sandy from Nevada. Hey, Zoe, if you're still here. Uh, and let's see. Panzer NYC. Check out Panzer NYC. Uh, hard rock metal band. Check them out. Um, hi, Suji. Thank you. Great music video. Thank you. Hi, Christy. Uh, Jed. There we are indeed. So <laughs> you get to see yourself. So Jed, um, Jed Klebowski, you might see him in the chat here. Uh, I hope he's still here. Um, he played bass. So you saw him playing bass in this video. Um, so yeah, um, you know, great bass player, great guy, uh, bass player out of Connecticut. He plays with a bunch of people. He plays with uh, a bunch of bands. He's played with uh, various, you know, well-known artists and he's a good guy and a good bass player. And, uh, you know, and all around, you know, you know, cool dude to know. So you go check him out, follow him on, you know, various social media and support his uh, music. Uh, all right. So Greg, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, Mark. Epic. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it, Mark. He says visually stunning and composition was powerful. Thank you. Uh, oh, Greg, listen to the song about 20 times a day. Thank you. The more you listen to it, stream it on Spotify or Apple Music or one of those. It helps. Thomas Esposito. Congratulations, Rob. Watch the video twice. Incredible. You're awesome, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Thomas Esposito is the coolest guy in the world. He um, was on set with me for this video and Brothel. He is, helps me out all the time. He's just like the all-around coolest guy. And uh, he came to the editing sessions he hangs out and he just, you know, helps out in all ways he can. He's just like the nicest, coolest guy you could ever imagine. And I super appreciate him. And, um, uh, you know, and I sent him some Levain's cookies to show my appreciation, which I'm always happy to do. I think I said it to him a couple times. So I'm always happy to do that. As everyone knows, Levain's cookies are my favorite. So um, that's my favorite thing in the world. So um, Rob McIntyre, amazing video. Rob McIntyre. He's like my best friend in the world. He's my brother. So um, I love Rob McIntyre. So thank you, Rob McIntyre, who lives in California. And, uh, uh, you know, I hope that, uh, tell Janie to watch it. I know she saw the last one. But, uh, you know, um, his, him and his family are like my family. They're, you know, they're an extension of me. So I'm very happy he's here. Um, so let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Um, so what we have here, we have, um, yes, Yes, Tom, Thomas, you should wear the shirt. And tomorrow night, tomorrow night, he's saying tomorrow night, because tomorrow night he's going to, and I'm going to the Steve Vai Sotriani concert at the Beacon Theater. Those of you who are New Yorkers know the Beacon Theater. And so we're both going to the Steve Vai concert, uh, Joe Sotriani, whatever. So yes, you should wear that shirt, you know? Um, he, he has a shirt, so that's great. And by the way, we have merchandise. I'm going to talk to you guys about that if you're interested. And I will be giving some away. Uh, superb, music and video. 
Thank you, Obama. Uh, and good Lord from Gregory. I appreciate that. Uh, Mark, guitar, I cannot hear too much. Voice can hear. Okay, thank you. Um, it's hard to manage these things. So, uh, Damon, that's who Skate and Create. Everything sounds good to me. Um, that was so sick, he says. Love the composition of the song and how it goes. A bit different styles. Killed it too. Thank you, Damon. Damon is a great guy. He lives in uh, Colorado and he's an awesome skateboarder, awesome guitar player, and just an all around great guy. Uh, hey, Rob, I love the shredding and truly loved your video. I'm glad that we got a chance to be a part of this premiere and show to be uh, showed it to a lovely guest of mine in New York, as well as from Germany. Thank you, Panzer. Uh, and hi, hi again to Jed. Uh, oh, and Suji says to Jed, great job. And Brian uh, says, badass space solo. Yes, it was. Jed said, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he says. Okay, Garrett, his co-workers loved it. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for the kind words, and thank you to Rob, who is also a great musician, obviously, and great guy. Can't wait to play together soon. We shall, Jed. And where can we read the spoken word poetry? You actually can read the spoken word poetry. It is available. Um, so um, it's on my website. If you go into the uh, news section, I actually put it up there. So you could actually read the poetry ahead of time, but it will be in the actual record, and I will have it, you know, readily available on the website now probably put it on social media it's just social media is such a weird animal that everything if it's not 15 seconds or if it's not like one shot of something nobody has the pay the, the attention span to to look unless you're truly interested and even if you are you'll probably go to someone's website but um yeah it is it is available there so if you are interested in checking out the poetry um I, you know, and I super appreciate it. But spoken word pieces of the poetry right throughout the entire record on different tracks. So um Yes, so you'll, this is the first track and you hear portions of it. And what, the way it opens with wisdom and brutality, knowledge and mortality, disintegration in time, cultural devolution, redefined by the genealogy of seasons, true prosaic, intense heart's desire, and dichotomy and reason through a mosaic of cement and barbed wire. That's the first line, but it fades off. So you don't hear all that, but you will. Um, and so please check it out and um, on my website on the news section. And while we're at it, you can check out the merch. It's the store section. And I will show you, I have some merchandise here to give you examples, but I do have plenty of merch. We have t-shirts, pins, mugs, tumblers, hats. Oh, here's my one of my favorite things that I have currently, which is, um, I carry this with me all the time. It's my, it's one of the things I have here. It's my earbuds case, and it's got the cover of the upcoming record on it. And there we go. And on the back, it's got my logo. I love this thing. And so it's just always in my pocket. So um, I just, it's just the coolest thing to me. And that way it can be black instead of the usual white because, you know, everything has got to be black, you know, always been on black to quote Mr. Wesley Snipes. Um, anyway, uh, does anyone have any questions? Was this filmed locally? Yeah, it was. It was actually filmed in Long Island. So the only reason I ever go out to Long Island is to film videos because uh, I work with um, a cinematographer who uh, has a studio out there that he uses. And um we filmed there uh, a lot of this, the material. So it was filmed in New York. Um, it's very much a New York project and everyone knows I'm very much, you know, a New York kind of guy. So, um, so yeah, so please, if anyone has any questions, please let me know. I'd love to answer any questions about the video, about the track itself, about the album. Um, I will grab some merchandise while you guys you know, are there and I'll show you some of the stuff we have. But um, here. so we have, um, a bunch of stuff. I'll just grab a few things here, but there is, other than wires being everywhere, this hat, which is my mother's hat. It's not mine. I borrowed it so I could show you all this really cool hat with my logo on it. It's embroidered, so it's really cool. It's not like a print thing. It's like actually thick embroidery. So that's actually very cool. And then I have a bunch of pins here, which you, can, you know, which are mine. I like these, so I got them. So they have my logo on them, whatever. They have the album cover on them. They have, there's another logo one. They have um, pictures of me on them. And uh, another picture of me. It seems a bit much for me. So I don't wear those, but I will wear the ones with the logo, with my logo on it or the album cover. I'll put them on my guitar strap because those are cool. And we have t-shirts always. So, you know, there's this, these are just the only two that I have. And really, I think one of them's my mom's and the other one was just sent to me as a sample, but this is you know, one of the ones with me on it, that one's a little too egocentric for me. But this one, 
I like a lot because it's got the album cover. It's a long sleeve. We have long sleeve and short sleeve and the whole deal. And there's a couple of things back here. Let's see where I can, if I can point, let's see how my pointing goes. So over there, right there, there's a tumbler and the mug. And everyone knows I love the mug. And I love the tumbler too. It's really cool. So it has the album cover on it. It's just super cool. And uh, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, Brian, it's true. Um, I, uh, I did cause the earthquake. I should apologize for that. As Brian says in the chat, if you all look, um, he says, you know, I dropped the track and then we have an earthquake in New York. It's true. It is my fault. And I do apologize for all my New York friends or anyone in the New York metropolitan area who had an earthquake this morning, which I did feel. And I thought it was maintenance workers doing some nonsense around my building because there's always stuff like that going on. And I thought that's what it was. And I felt like shaking and I'm like, ah, they're using some crazy machine while I'm trying to like meditate here. <laughs> and so it didn't work out so great for me. But uh, then I found out later it's an earthquake as my phone started to scream at me as everyone else's probably did. Um, but yeah, uh, I, 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 do take, I do take credit for the earthquake. I think it was all the, probably played too many notes, you know. So, uh, you know, to quote the movie Amadeus, take some of the notes out. Too many notes. All right. So um, anyway, uh, have you? Let's see. So uh, when are you going to start live performances uh, for your new album? Well, later in this year, probably. Um, so when basically the album will come out later in the year. We're going to release probably two more tracks before the album comes out, um, and hopefully sooner. This one, these two were like six months apart, so that's not ideal. But um, but almost to the day actually, it was October sixth and then April fifth. So six months, but uh, we're, we're going to get it out sooner. So uh, the next one's called Paranoic Mondays, and um, it conjoins Zeitgeist Nova King Dump Truck with Brothel Star House Soup, and the videos will conjoin. And it's, it's all paranoia and obsession. So um, you'll see in the video where this one's more about manipulation uh, and, you know, the sort of big brother aspects. I was very influenced by a certain series of books that, you know, and, and, and uh, films uh, with this video. Um, 1984, book and film, um, as you can probably see with the screen. And uh, Clockwork Orange, book and film. Anthony Burgess' book, Stanley Kubrick film, two of my favorites. Uh, two books that I love, um, Gravity's Rainbow, my favorite book, uh, which deals with some similar concepts, and uh, which is by Thomas Pynchon. And um, uh, David Foster Wallace's Infinite Jest, which is kind of like Junior Thomas Pynchon deals with some of these concepts and, um, you know, uh, a couple other, you know, you know, some, a few other, I, you know, it was kind of influenced by some of the early Aronofsky, like Pi, things like that. And some of these themes are concurrent with, you know, some, some of the other ones, but you'll see what I mean. Um, but anyway, Paranoic Mondays will be the next one. Um, and that we'll see how that goes, but that one's very much like, um, it's, it's like a hard rock metal riff. And so it's kind of, goes between the two tracks and that it'll it'll make sense but i think if you're a hard rock and metal fan that one's for you and then we have the one after that anthropomorphic self-implosion theory which is a very long track it's 11 minutes but with the intro which is called the birth of liquid i'm sorry the birth of liquid profit profits once i play i can't speak um that one's like an intro to it it's like a minute and then you have like 11 minutes so it comes to almost 13 minutes but that will be a video too <laughs> but it will be released with the record itself all together and that has Jed on it as well. And uh, Will Calhoun from Living Color plays drums on that. And um, you'll see. Um, it's, it's really great. But uh, Jed plays on Paranoid Mondays as well. And um, so we'll get those out there and then we'll probably be doing some performing after that. So to answer that question, um, yes, we will be performing definitely New York and Los Angeles. Um, so we'll see what happens. So uh, Jed, if you're interested, you know, pack your bag. Um, anyway, um, so let's see, we have um, Garrett. Uh, have you ever been or currently playing in bands or just projects like this and academia type projects? Uh, so to the latter part of the question, yes, academia and projects like this. Um, you know, I, I'm very much like about autonomy, um, having full control of what I do. So when I have been in bands, I've been in full control. And I have been in bands um, and I, you know, I do session work. I do, um, you know, I do all kinds of things like that. So I play with lots of different people, but uh, as far as that goes, um, the, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't currently play in a band except my own. And, um, you know, I, I usually kind of think in terms of um, what I'm doing. Um, you know, I have these 
uh, or, you know, creative concepts that are, you know, they're not necessarily musical concepts. They could be um, anything. Um, meaning that I'm a, I see myself as a conceptual artist and the guitar, composition, visual arts, uh, poetry, philosophy are all paintbrushes that I choose from to illustrate that. And there are times when I'm just focused on filmmaking. There's times I'm just focused on doing the art. And there were times like that working on this where I was just thinking like a filmmaker. I wasn't even thinking about the guitar or thinking about the composition because I'm already past that to, to the point where I'm thinking about that. So insofar as that goes, I'm really all about being a, a, a sort of an autonomous artist um, that's exploring these things and these concepts and these, you know, sort of philosophical ideas and running with that. But, uh, you know, I play with a lot of different people and I've played lots of different sessions and I have played in bands, but nothing currently. And I, you know, I, I, once I got to a certain point, I guess, in college, I really just wanted to do my own thing. And yeah, I do things like film scoring, which is collaborative. And I, you know, compose for, you know, orchestral and chamber music and things like that and do theatrical things and things like that. So yeah, all kinds of stuff. So let's see, uh, how does this track relate to the first one you released? Ah, well, this, that's where, the, you know, there's a missing link right now. And Paranoic Mondays is kind of the missing link. So we start with this sort of concept that I'm dealing with here, which is very different. And looking at them, you're gonna say, well, they seem very different. And they are, because essentially ideological explosions of the absurd here, this is showing multiple and a duality of, you know, the human nature of mankind. Um, humankind, I guess that's a more PC way of putting it. But um, yeah, I mean, and so it's showing different persons, persons of my personality. And, you know, it's funny because I said this, I said after I, after I shot this video, I said, I really want people to see this because this one defines me in a way that Brothel really doesn't um, as an artist and as a human being. It really has a lot to say about who I am. And um, my mother said to me, you know, the other one is your personality too. It's just a different form of your personality. You are that way as well. You're snarky and have this sort of fun element where I'm sort of smirking at the camera and pointing to my hand as I'm doing some legato activity and things like that. And this sort of like cartoonish aspect and that whole thing, which is, you know, it's a surrealism kind of thing, but you'll see how they, they do, they will conjoin. And um, the end of this one will also introduce the beginning of Paranoic where there's another spoken word portion it's a, not a portion, but just a phrase that introduces it. And then it ends with another phrase that will then lead into the next the brothel video. So they are conjoined. Um, and so, you know, there, there you go. Um, uh, let's see. So what we have here. Um, so let's see. Are these tracks have any background relation or connection to each other? Yes. And so the answer to that, yes, they do. The entire album is based on this poem. So everything is related. Um, it's, it's all, it's out of order. And the reason why it's out of order, I would have liked to put this on when went out first. And a lot of people who've heard it, when they heard it said to me that they like this one better. And some people like, you know, Brothel, but, but Brothel is a more accessible track. So when, after coming out of hiding for a while, um, you know, uh, you know, sort of my Nietzschean, you know, creative coma, my sort of cocoon, as he would refer to it before I emerge and I don't know, the butterfly concept, but that lets somebody else decide whether there's actually any butterfly element to this. I can't say, I can't judge myself, but that's the idea. So I get into this cocoon and I, you know, I, I've said this to my friends. I say this to my friend, Robert, uh, Rob McIntyre, who's here, um, that, you know, I'm like, well, I'm in the creative cocoon. He knows what I mean because he understands the Nietzschean reference. Um, but that's, you know, I kind of get, you know, very um, insular at that moment. And, you know, when I do that, you know, I'm sort of in my own head. So the perspective is, very much in my own. But when it comes down to what was to be released first, I chose the third track instead of starting where I'd like to and go do things chronologically. And the reason why is because it's a much more accessible track, a much more accessible video. And it's a way to introduce me back into this situation. As I spent so much time composing, working with film scoring, working things like that, and getting away from instrumental guitar. And um, so it's out of order. But from now on, everything's in order. So the paranoid will fill in the blank. And then the one after that is called urban deconstructionism, which comes after brothel and then birth, the birth of liquid profits and anthropomorphic self implosion theory. And it ends with the final track, which is called ideological explosions of the absurd hero, which is a full orchestra guitar and drum kit. So it's this 
and it's a full orchestra and there's a an actual drum kit as well not just orchestral production per, uh, percussion so that one finalizes whereas you hear the beginning of the record starts with a spoken word and the orchestra comes in this ends it and i should mention that the themes you hear in that orchestra are themes from the final piece ideological explosions of the absurd hero which will end it um and there will be you know videos for everything but those videos for that which is the second half of the record starts with birth of liquid prophets anthropomorphic and ideological. That's the second half of the record. And yes, I think record. So there's a side A, a side B. They're called wisdom, br brutality. So that's the names of the of the two sides, A and B. So um, yeah. So uh, the themes that you hear in the beginning of the record end the record as well. They'll actually start the track, and then it continues from there. And there's spoken word in there as well. So I should mention that as well. There's spoken word throughout. There, I don't think there's any track that doesn't have spoken word. We have these great voices. The voice I should mention on this one in the uh, the, the, the uh, woman that you hear is uh, Tanya, and uh, she uh, she's she did a fantastic job. She has a beautiful voice, and that is actually her face. And she lives in London, and she uh, she's from India. When I when we recorded it, we recorded it remotely. It was like time difference is terrible because I was basically up all night, and she was it was like eleven o'clock in the morning for her. It was like two three o'clock in the morning for me. So I just lied in bed and did it from <laughs> from there. But um, yeah, she uh, she did a great job. And the, the the actually person you see at the end of the video is not the person who did the spoken word who was a guy from Nigeria. But the, it's actually a friend of mine, his name's Michael Ricardo, and he's a, he was a, uh, he studied with me uh, years ago. And uh, he's a good friend of mine. He's, um, uh, he uh, is a songwriter and a singer, a really good singer. He, you know, he, he's sort of soul, R&B, pop, you know, kind of stuff, great. But I just asked him if he would do it. And he he did the, the that, you know, the, the, he actually, you know, did the, the the acting portion on that. He just spoke the word, the words, and I edited it to make it look like it was the same voice and the same guy. But Tanya is the person. And she, uh, you know, she recorded in London where she and her husband live now. So, yeah, so there was that. Um, but again, the, 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 there is a connection between everything. And I, I hope it'll be very evident once everything comes out. I feel like I want everyone to see it now, but I'm going to just put them out there one at a time. And so, yay, from Jed. So, yes, Jed. You know, we're at it. Um, and so he's already packed. Um, great. Uh, Thomas. Um, yeah, another aftershock. It's true. And then, uh, oh, thank you. Love the artwork. We'll have to watch again to catch it all. Yeah, the artwork goes by quick. And I was very influenced by, like, the fast kind of, like, editing that Aronofsky did in his early films, like Requiem for a Dream and Pi. Um, and, uh, you know, those sort of fast editing moments, like in Requiem for a Dream, where... There's, you know, Ellen Burstyn is, or or whomever was taking um, a various drug, and then they show various things happening. And yeah, I, the sort of fast editing is something that appeals to me. So I, 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 I that's part of the concept. But yeah, um, um, uh, let's see. So like trilogy. Um, well, yes. I mean, those three. If you if what you mean is like the first three tracks, yes, but then it combines with everything. There's actually seven tracks on this, and I should mention there's a second record ready to go. Um, I, I put this together as a double album. This is the first album. It's called Ideological Explosions of the Absurd Hero. The second album is called Zen and the Absurd, which you saw in this video. It's part of the spoken word, and that is pretty much ready to go. It actually still has to be mixed, but it's you know I, it, it's it's done. It's it's sitting there waiting to be mixed, and when it is, the art is done. The, uh, you know, everything's sitting there. And so when, once this is released, I'll be releasing, I got a ton of material to put out there. I would love to put it all at once. It's just the industry doesn't function that way. It used to be you put out a record, CD, an album, and then you would put out singles to promote it. Now you put out singles to promote, and then, you know, it's Spotify and Apple Music and streaming. So that's the way it works. So, um, um, let's see. So, uh. <laughs> Thomas, they are the best cookies. So yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, how come when I use Zeitgeist like preset? Off? <laughs> okay, Brian. Brian uh, owns my old XFX 2C Plus. I think that's what it was called. Um, and I use the XFX 3, which some of you know, and um, that's what you were hearing me messing around with. And so, um, yeah, uh, the 2C, the, uh, 2C Plus, which was my old one, and I, I sold it to Brian. And um, I have a a uh, setting on there called Zeitgeist 
or maybe it's like guys Novocaine dump truck. I may have like one called that and it's, the, I have it on here too. So I might, I have to check my own, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> why don't the sweet notes sound like that? Is that how it works? Yeah. It's like, just use the setting. I mean, you know, it's, it's all effects. That's none of it's enhanced, but um, yeah. So uh, as far as that goes, um, yeah, I mean, um, uh, I, I do, if you check out actually, Brian, this is personal to you. If you check out morphological plus plus, I think it's called, uh, that's the setting that I'm using. That's my main lead setting. And that's what I have on here. So it's called morphological plus plus. And that's my main lead guitar setting I uh, use throughout the record. And, uh, if you check it out, I think it's pretty much the same on yours. So, um, love the tone and clarity, all the layers blend very well. Thank you for noticing that. This was an incredibly difficult track to mix. It's the hardest track I've ever had to mix. So I'm working with a mix engineer and the person who mixed this on the last track, it was mixed by Greg Worth. Greg Worth works in uh, Steve Vai's studio. And, um, he does a lot, he basically works out of there. So, and he did an amazing job. And, but that's a more straightforward rock tune. This one has an orchestra. It's got keyboards with all these sounds. It's got a ton of guitars. Cause even when you hear that shredding part where it's like metal and I'm in the black room, there's, that's actually, you're hearing four lead guitars playing simultaneously. There, it's, it's a harmony twice. So it's panned. So it sounds like an orchestra of guitar. So it's like, far left, far right, and then kind of towards the center. And so there's so many layers. I mean, if I showed you guys who know Pro Tools, the, the actual Pro Tools session, you'd see there's like, I don't even know, like 135 tracks or something absurd. And I, the mix engineer on this is a guy named Rich Mauser, who is a, a really fantastic mix engineer. He does a lot of progressive rock. And he uh, he works with Dream Theater. He works with Liquid Tension Experiment. He works with um, a lot of the Neil, Neil Morse projects, a lot of the uh, stuff that um, uh, involves uh, um, Mike Portnoy. A lot of his stuff uh, and a lot of projects he's on, which he's on a lot with both of those projects, uh, Liquid Tension, Dream Theater again, as we know, and um, Neil Morse's projects uh, and things like that, Spock's Beard, things like that. Uh, and he knows progressive rock, so he knows layers. So we had to go back and forth and we mixed it. It was one of the first ones we mixed. And then months later, I said to him, we got we to gotta do some fixing on this. It went through, I don't know, seven or eight different versions before we got it right because oh, the strings need to be louder here they, all these things it was very hard so yes a lot of layers i'm glad you say there's clarity there because i worked my ass off trying to get clarity on this track this one means a lot to me and it shows who i am in a lot of ways the whole thing with the orchestra and the, and the, the you know the electric guitar all together all those elements um are a big part of just the description of who i would be you know as an artist and where i want you know, where I want to go with a lot of this. So um, it was really important to hear all those elements. And I, I arranged those strings in such a specific way. That one section where I'm just sort of sweeping away at all those chords, and it's like a big, it's like a big climax moment. You hear, and you see the orchestra behind me just chugging away at those string instruments and all that. I wanted to hear that, you know, all those arpeggios going on in the orchestra. I wanted to hear my arpeggios, which are not the same. They're actually written as counterpoint, but I want to hear it all as, and I believe in a democratization of voices, meaning that when I write and arrange, I want, I don't want one instrument to be more prevalent. I don't write like something like concerto style where say the violin is taking precedence and there's support from, you know, from the accompaniment of the rest of the orchestra. I write it so that the cellos, role is the same as the lead guitar's role is the same as you know let's say the harp's role that everything that's being played is you know effectively active and that you're hearing all the voices so it was very hard to mix so that was a long uh, description but bear with me um thank you for bearing with me okay so yes thank you brian for noticing that uh caught on the live instagram yeah i did a little quick live instagram on um, a 20 minutes before we started this whole thing um just to, impromptu just, you know, figured, let me just do this. Anyone on Instagram, I'll let them know that the premiere is happening soon. And uh, it was just off the top of my head to do that. And uh, I was going to do it on Facebook, but I got carried away. I was going to do a little bit of both, but, you know, I kind of like, you know, I don't know. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I did a quick impromptu. I'll probably do a few more of those here and there, just like pop up without scheduling. Uh, see if anyone's around and just, while well, I'm just noodling around on the guitar or have something to say or, you know. But uh, you caught the live Instagram before, and I must reiterate, you're a monster player and composer. Whiskey clone. Thank you. That means so much to me. It really does mean a great deal to me. I feel like I, uh, you know, most disquieting is my human frailty. I, uh, I see myself as just sort of a vessel of what I do creatively. I always have since I was a child. Um, uh, I've always been um, 
you know, someone who's been a creative person. I, it was one of those things where I was predetermined that I would be following the arts and that I was an artist. When I was a child, people, you know, I was always drawing and painting. My mother is an artist. She's a writer. She's a visual artist. Um, she has degrees in art and uh, literature. And she influenced that on me. I was, you know, going to the Philadelphia Art Museum when I was three years old with her. I was looking at art. I was drawing. As soon as she could get a pencil or a pen in my hand, she was teaching me how to draw. Um, music was always prevalent in my life. And so, you know, the arts are, you know, the defining of me. And I, you know, hopefully have them in some reasonable way. So the compliment uh, means a great deal to me. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it just basically you know, what I, my output is who I am. So that means a lot to me. Uh, who would you say are your main inspirations uh, or main inspirations are? Uh, you have such a unique style though. Thank you. Thank you again. Um, okay. Uh, inspirations. Uh, he says, I hear a lot of my favorite players like Sean Lane, Haldsworth, Buckethead, and your crazy intervals and mad phrasing. Ha ha ha. Yes. Those are actually, those are accurate. So very well done. Um, uh, Whiskey clone. Uh, Sean Lane, is probably the most technical guitar player of all time thus far. Uh, if any, anyone who knows him knows that this guy is the monster. I mean, thank you for calling me a monster, but this guy is the monster who everyone imitated. And I was on a, um, a, a he actually died in 2003. I was on a, very sad, because he was 40 years old. Um, uh, but he, uh, there was a tribute CD done to him, two part. It was like a part one, part two. And I was on it. Um, and it actually, the track that I did was the demo. I, I submitted the demo of this track because I guys know we can dumb track. At the time, it was called Transfiguring Perceptions, which you hear that at the end. But that was a working title. And it's just a demo. Um, and so it's actually on, and it's, you know, the quality is not that great, but it was on this tribute to Sean Lane. Sean Lane is one of my favorites. The other, if I was to say others, uh, Alan Holdsworth. Absolutely. I mean, you probably noticed when I do the legato thing. I mean, I, I'm a, I, I like, I love legato. I love, picking too. And I studied with some really great pickers. I studied with like Pat Martino. Those of you who know jazz guitar know Pat Martino is the master and he's an amazing picker. I studied with a, a gentleman named Scott McGill. Some of you may know him, who's an awesome picker as well. Uh, and I learned to pick. And when I was studying that, I, I actually got away from my legato and said, I'm just going to pick all the time. And so picking is a big, you know, part of my style as well. But I, I, I'll do like a picking section and I'll just do like a whole legato thing, you know, and I did some of that when I was just messing around before. But yeah, I mean, the Holdsworth thing was a big influence on me. Um, Satriani, sure. Satriani was an early influence when I was in high school, more than currently. Buckethead, yes. He has those odd intervals and the and the, the sort of, you know, we, you know, we, I feel like a little bit kindred with him, you know, in a lot of ways. We both have like, you know, sort of an avant-garde perspective on art and music. And uh, Steve Vai, you know, I mean, that one's pretty obvious. Um, uh, you know, I've, if, if you watch the Instagram, you could pretty see, you can't see it here, but in the Instagram, I was doing it on my phone and there are albums on the wall. You can see a couple autographs over here and there's a Satriani one. There's a Haltsworth one right there. And that one is Stan Lee, who I also think is awesome. And, uh, uh, and, and uh, there's a bunch of Steve Vai autograph work. It's all autograph stuff on my wall. There's like Husker Du, which people who know me know I love Husker Du with you know, some Guns N' Roses autograph stuff and things like that. Um, but, you know, I, I, I love... Steve Vai as well. He's another one of my play the players I like. So Sean Lane, Haldsworth, Buckethead, Steve Vai, and you know, Satriani in the past. So yeah, very that's very accurate. And and thank you for noticing that because um, uh, yeah, I mean that's obviously you you're very astute. Uh, I I you know my compliments to you. I mean that you can see those influences in my playing, and um, and I appreciate that very much. Um, so thank you, uh, Whiskey Clinton. Uh. Uh, yeah, you, 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 those, you still have the setting. I, I assume Brian, you're referring to the settings and the X effects that I, I sent you, but yes, try them out. Try that morphological plus plus. It's great. Uh, d democratization of voices. I'm stealing that phrase. Yeah, that's really, it's a very prominent thing that in my approach to composition since I was in college and graduate school that I think in terms of that. Um, so yeah, Sean Lane is fucking terrifying. Wish I was able to see him myself. I'm only 17, but Lane is definitely my biggest inspiration of all. You know what? Uh, he that is very that's great because if you're if you're aspiring to Sean Lane, then you're with the rest of us because anyone who is a technical guitar player is um, knows that Sean Lane was just a tremendous talent, and you should definitely um, 
yeah, definitely listen to Sean Lane and watch him. And he was also supposed to be, I've never met him, but you know, I was, you know, it was a long time ago and you know, I was just getting started, but um, when he died, but he, um, he was supposed to be just a super nice guy, they say. And there's like, you know, there's even a video of him at Nam. Um, where he meets Alan Holzer for the first time. And he's just giddy like a kid. But it's like they're both like the, the, the most technical, amazing players you can imagine. And so it's funny to watch Sean Lane like fawning over Alan Holzer. It just shows how he, uh, like his humility and what a you know, like humble guy he was, which he's supposed to be. Um, and how he kind of got the shaft um, from the business because at the time he was, you know, kind of a, you know, he was a heavy set guy. He wasn't, didn't really look like at that time period when he came out. These you know, the skinny guys with the tights and the spandex, which you know a lot of us look you know like this scarecrows. But um, but he didn't, and so I, and I think when he was putting his stuff out there, I think the industry wasn't really very appreciative of the fact that he didn't look that part, and um, he didn't get the you know the traction he should have gotten. But everyone was stealing his licks back then, in my understanding. Guys like Paul Gilbert, the stuff you'd see him do. It was like he was ripping it off of these demos that Sean Lane was, you know, passing around throughout, you know, you know, the, that sort of scene. So he is great and you should check him out. Hey, Rob, great to see another wild video being released from you. Loved watching it. My fingers are tired just watching you play. Thank you, Jesse. Jesse won uh, the Brothel Slaughterhouse Soup t-shirt last time. So, um, yeah, he's the guy who has it. Um, uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's... It, Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here again. Um, does anyone else have any other questions that I can answer? If there's any other questions, um, I would super appreciate it. And uh, otherwise, um, like I said, um, uh, you know, what else do we got here? We have, like I said, I should have talked about the merchandise. You, please, if you're interested, check out the merchandise on the store section of my website. Um, and uh, uh, like there's a ton of stuff. There's even, you know, there's even a Zeitgeist Novocaine Dump Truck t-shirt that's there for a limited time. Um, and, uh, I don't remember everything it's there, but there's sweatshirts, there's long sleeve t-shirts, there's mugs and hats and there's, uh, what, I don't know, beanie hats, like your ski hats with my logo on them. If you want to wear my logo, which is cool. There's, you know, all kinds of different t-shirts, ones with the logo, ones like this. There's ones that just have the logo, you know, stuff like that. And they come in a few different colors. I don't, you know, I, I like black. So, you know, we obviously, so uh, most of it's black, but there. Um, so yeah, there's, there, there is merchandise there. And, uh, let me mention some giveaways, a, a giveaway situation. So again, uh, please go to Spotify, Apple music, whatever streaming source and, um, stream it, stream the track. It helps me out. And it would also help help out if you add it to a playlist. So this is what we did last time. If anyone adds anything to a playlist, um, please let me know, uh, send me the playlist, Spotify, Apple music, whatever it is. I, I, I actually don't use Apple music, but, um, because it's like a pay service, but I, I use Spotify. Um, so if uh, if anyone's using, uh, you know, puts those up there, uh, puts me in any playlist at all, uh, I would really appreciate it and let me know, and I will enter you into a contest to win anything from the merchandise store, including, but not exclusively, um, uh, the um, um, the uh, like I said, became dump truck T-shirt. But you can have anything you want. Whatever, I don't care. Um, and I always, this is an on, uh, an ongoing offer that I have. Any, and this is not a contest. This is not the giveaway thing where I put names in a hat. And by the way, as those of you who saw last time, I actually use this hat. Uh, it's not, it's not a figurative or me metaphorical statement. I actually use this hat. Take the names, put them in there, and pick them right in front of you. So, um, so I'll, I'll actually put the names in a hat. That hat. Um, so yeah, uh, I you know I, that that is a giveaway. So if you 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 know anyone who adds me to their playlist, please let me know because if I don't know, can't add you to the giveaway, and then you can have whatever you want from the merchandise store, um, you know. Uh, and that, that, yeah, so that's that, and you can have that this really cool, you know, ear pods case. And there's one for the both types of ear pods. This is just the I have the basic ones, but yeah, with the ideological explosions of the absurd hero artwork, and so. Um, yeah, so, you know, there's that. But th this is an ongoing offer. Anyone who does any video of any part portion of any of my tracks, like, you know, just plays like, like you know, even if you just kind of did the sort of like, you know. You know, um, I should do that without the fret rap because then you can hear the open strings. But um, that's the intro to um, Brothel Slaughterhouse Soup. Even if you just played that on like a, 
10 second video or 15 second video on Instagram or YouTube. Uh, if you do it, uh, send me the link and I will post it everywhere and I will appreciate it. And I will send you any piece of merchandise you want. A t-shirt, mug, a tumbler. Where is it? There those mugs and tumblers, anything else, whatever. Um, and I would super appreciate it. So, um, Gregory says the merch is Greg says the merch is top notch. Thank you. And thank you for buying stuff. Um, and uh, whiskey, uh, whiskey clone. Th uh, yes, please buy a shirt or anything you like. Um, so there you go. Uh, let's see. Um, Brian says, it's cool to hear that Sean Lane is still inspiring influential 17 year old today, especially because he was never as mainstream as Viagra Gilbert. That's exactly right. And, and that's, you know, that's completely accurate. And I agree with you completely. I am, I'm very glad to see that, that whiskey, um, 17 years old is influenced by Sean Lane. And he is, like I said, one of my main influences. I, you know, and a lot of this wide interval stuff that I'll do, you know, these sort of like, you know, sort of like, you know let me just make something up. It's sort of like, they sound like an earthquake. So, um, just for those New Yorkers. Um, so yeah, like if I'm doing this kind of thing, like, you know, that's very much like a Sean Lane influence, these wide interval things or something like this, like, where I'm doing these like, lot, like large fifths and fourths and things like that, you know, just as an example. So I, I, I yeah, like they're, they're all over my playing, these sort of things. And they're not directly Sean Lane licks, but I just think, you know, he uses wide intervals. His hand always looks like this when he's playing, you know, and he does that stuff. So I come up with my own ideas based on how can I do something like that? That's a really cool thing. And as a guy who is, has a background in contemporary classical music, and wide intervals are part of sort of part of the, you know, the genre. I want to incorporate that into what I do. So yes, I, I think it's really cool that, you know, whiskey, I think it's super cool that you're into Sean Lane. And I, I think it's cool that you're here. I think it's cool that you're 17 and interested in, actual players playing actual music who have quality and they're playing like Sean and I like call him Sean like I know him but Sean Lane because I never met him but you know but he's part of my you know he's part of my you know he's part of my he's one of my imaginary friends I have imaginary friends or influences throughout the various arts so I have the writers that I love which I mentioned a few of them like Thomas Pynchon and Nietzsche uh, and uh, Sartre, and some of the philosophers, and then there's artists like you know Salvador Dali and Vasily Kandinsky, and um, you know people and uh, guitar players, composers like Elliot Carter, uh, Charles Warren, who I studied with and uh, got my graduate degree studying with him, and uh, uh, Stefan Volpe. So those of you who know me know these, and, and film score composers like John Williams. Just love John Williams. So these are all, you know, influences on to what I do as an artist. So I think it's great that um, you're into Sean Lane um, whiskey. And so great. And thank you for being part of this. And thank you for, you know, all of your, you know, your contributions today. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, he was without a doubt one of my favorites. His ear for melody phrasing is unmatched. He really does have this amazing ear. I, he's just, and my understanding about Sean Lane is he was just one of these guys who didn't practice. He just picked up the guitar and could do it. You know, and people, and his family would say he never really practiced. He just kind of pick it up and he was just born with that. He's just one of those unusual people. So, um, but uh, yeah, okay. So then um, let's see, Mark D, are you playing a worldwide tour after this? Not worldwide right now, but boy, I'd love to. And if I go to Europe, I have the right drummer in mind for that because Atma at Anyer, who played drums on um, Brothel Slaughterhouse Soup, is just the coolest guy and a great drummer and uh, just like the, one of the best drummers in the world. If you if you get a chance, check him out on um, online, Atma Anyer, and tell him tell him I you know bring him a thing and say Rob Spar thinks that you're awesome and told me to go check you out. But he is awesome. He's his playing is phenomenal on Brothel. If you listen to Brothel Slaughterhouse Soup, he's his playing is so tight. And um, if I go there, he lives in Poland, Warsaw, I think. Uh, but he, he lives in Poland. Um, but uh, anyway, he uh, if I go to Europe, I would definitely contact him to, to do you know to do those gigs. But but right now, I don't have worldwide plans. I mean, hopefully it'll be New York and the Los Angeles, and then we'll see where there's uh, you know where there's interest. Um, and so uh, let's see. Uh, haven't really thought of uh, overtures on non-classical albums. Was that your thinking behind doing one of these albums? Yeah, I mean. Um, uh, as far as that goes, uh, yeah, I mean, I think of, I don't think, I don't think like a rock musician, really. 
I don't act like a rock musician. You know, I mean, it's like, I kind of think like, I think I said this before, and I don't know how this sounds, but I think like a general conceptual artist. So I just think about like creating something that has a visual aspect and a written aspect and a musical component. And um, when I do that, I think, well, I want to introduce this in a certain way, kind of the way you would introduce an opera or the way you would introduce the prologue to a, a novel as I'm a, a, an avid reader. Um, and, or, you know, something that would just sort of present as like a big opening and overture and give you themes that you'll hear throughout the record and show different styles and all these things. So this was written with that in mind, showing a lot of different things. And the written word is like the first phrases is like the most important written word portion kind of in a way. And it repeats throughout this album. You'll hear the wisdom and brutality, knowledge and immortality, disintegration and time, et cetera, et cetera, dot, dot, dot. You know, you can read it if you want, just go to the news section of my site. And um, yeah, so I kind of like wanted to put all these elements together and represent all of that. Um, so yeah, so, um, if, if, you know, that's kind of what this does and even the visual aspect and the, the film aspect and all the quick edits that I do with my art, which you see is there's art and photography and things like that involved where they're just shooting by and moving with the music, which was a very challenging thing to edit. I've been editing, I, I've started working on this like in November and then it's just now coming out. So I, I had to edit and, um, you know, in all kinds of ways and learn as I go in a lot of ways about editing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, but with a film editing portion. So when I was doing that, I was just thinking like a film editor and yeah, where's my first stop in Europe? You know where it is, Ivana. It's uh, heading to Serbia, you know? So, um, yeah. Does anyone else have any other questions, um, while we're doing this, uh, before I, you know, finish this up, do a little playing, whatever else, um, any questions about the video or the album or the track itself? Uh, do you want to know what's larger, the Empire State Building, which I can see from my window, or um, the Ancient Pyramids of Cheops, which, by the way, I think it's the Ancient Pyramids of Cheops. I'm not sure. But if you have any other questions, um, those are great, too. Um, so, yeah. And uh, if anyone has any questions about what the best cookies in New York are, you know, I, th I think they're Levain's. But um, but there's a few challengers that I'm going to be doing a, a cookie, you know, Pepsi challenge with, uh, you know, in the weeks to come. I'm going to make some stops. Um, at various places and then just take a portion of each one and do like a blindfold test and decide, do any of these match Levain's? Because I just don't think they could. But there are ones that people say, oh no, this one's the best one. And I'm I'm one of these guys who, you know, on my Instagram, they, I have, you know, guitar players, but I have more like cookie influencers on mine. I'm like looking at cookies and art and things like that and movies and stuff like that. Levain's unmatched. You're right, Suji. They are unmatched, so anyone who's in New York knows. And not just New York, because they're available in Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., a bunch of other places. So if any of you guys, you know, you can buy them online. So if, you, if you're a real cookie person like me, um, buy them online and try them out. And if you don't like them, blame me. But they aren't as good unless you get them, like, fresh from the place. And when they, they ship them, you know, it's fresh cookie. So, you know, it's, it's not going to last the same way. So there you go. I somehow incorporated cookies into discussions about art, music, poetry. Things like that. If anyone wants to talk about movies, I'm you know movie buff too. But um, yeah, if there's any other questions, let me know. And otherwise, I'll just do a little playing and finish this up. We've been on here for a while now, um, and over an hour, I guess. So I don't want to, you know, wear out my welcome. But if anyone has any other questions, um, I'll be happy to answer them. Otherwise, I'll just play a little bit for a couple minutes, and uh, and and thank you all. Thank you all for being here. Um, thank you for coming and checking out the premiere. Uh, please like the video. Please put some comments. Be kind, please. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I, I, it all helps. It really does help. Um, the way that the algorithms work these days, you know, it's, it's all social media and things like that. Uh, if you aren't on all my social media pages, please follow me. Uh, Facebook, it's Rob's, at Rob Spar Music. The rest of them are at Rob Spar, Instagram, TikTok. Um, you know, Twitter, threads, uh, you know, Facebook, YouTube. If you're not following my YouTube page, follow it. Um, and, uh, you know, and it all helps. And please, uh, if you please put me in some playlists, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever it is, and send me the playlist. Uh, and uh, I'll enter you in a contest to win something. Uh, one of my pieces of merchandise, whatever you like. And, um, uh, and if you and like I said, if any guitar players or any any instrument, I don't care if you play the tuba, if you play a little portion, like a melody of something of mine, put it on social media, put it on YouTube, put it on Instagram, uh, send it to me. I will post it everywhere and I will send you whatever piece of merchandise you like. 
um, do movies that inspire you as a musician. I really like a lot of old school silent films, uh, such as Nosferatu. Nosferatu is great, actually. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and it's true. I actually, this is an interesting question, Whiskey. Um, I, I actually did a project that was for um, a museum. There was a mu there's a museum uptown here in New York. Those of you who know New York, it's up near Columbia University. Uh, uptown sort of near Harlem and um they I got commissioned to, to do um there's a silent film called Ghosts Before Breakfast which um was an avant-garde film uh from the 1920s I forget the actual date maybe 28 um and it was the soundtrack the score was destroyed during World War II by the Nazis you know they caused some trouble and um there was it, it's basically a silent film with a score uh, but I was commissioned to do my version of a score for it, um, and it was presented at this museum. Um, and uh, it's it's for uh, a chamber group. If those who you know classical music, it's for a piero, uh, uh, a piero uh, uh, ensemble, which is like violin, cello, clarinet, flute, piccolo, percussion, uh, pitched and uh, non-pitched, meaning xylophone, marimba. Uh, vibraphone, uh, piano. I'm probably forgetting something, but uh, yeah. But anyway, a Puro combination, which, um, it, it, so I recorded this um, track and um, this soundtrack, and you can actually see it on YouTube. It's it's in my YouTube. So if you're interested in silent films, it's a really cool avant-garde, um, you know, uh, uh, silent film that I did the score. This Well, this score, there, a lot of people did scores for it, but I did a score for it because it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it, it doesn't have any, there's no um, copyright licensing issue with this one. You can do this one. So they commissioned me to do this. It was premiered there and it's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, I, I dig the silent film thing too, but uh, I, I'm influenced by a lot of filmmakers. I, I mentioned Stanley Kubrick. I love Quentin Tarantino. Um, I, 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 you know, there's a lot of filmmakers that I really uh, appreciate, you know, sort of Scorsese and Chris Nolan, a lot of the big, big guns that we talk about. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Kubrick, a Clockwork Orange is always a huge influence on to me. And I, it, you know, as a filmmaker, that really would, you know, his style really appeals to me. But uh, there's a lot of them. And I, you know, I, I, I'm a movie buff. I think about movies all the time. And, you know, it's a big part of who I am as well. And uh, Brian, great stuff. Uh, you deserve all the recognition and compliments possible. Can't wait to see what's next. Thank you, Brian. Super appreciate it. I'll do a little bit of playing. And unless there's other questions, I'm just going to do hit that backing track again. I'll do a little bit of playing and then I'll, and I will play as well. But uh, here we go. Crazy drum, that's Will Calhoun from Living Color, you hear that? Those of you who are Living Color fans. Thank <laughs> you. 
enough of that i think you've all heard enough for today so not to wear out my welcome but thank you all for coming uh being a part of this thank you all for watching the video uh if you have any questions you know certainly let me know otherwise i will be doing another with these soon and um maybe on instagram um but yeah uh thank you for all for coming thank you all for bearing with me with you know me sort of like you know my goofing around here with the guitar and thank you for watching the video and please add me to playlists check me out on you know watch you know stream it on spotify and apple music uh let me know if you put on playlists you can win something and um uh yeah if you can play a portion of any of my tracks and put it on you know social media i'll share it everywhere i'll give you any piece of merchandise you like check out my merch store on my website robspar.com pretty easy to remember. Um, cool. Thank you all. All the best. I appreciate every one of you and I appreciate all of your support. Thank you for being here and being part of this with me and uh, taking this journey with me. So uh, yeah. And anyone has any questions, you know where to find me. You can find me on social media and you can find me, uh, you can email me at rob at robspar or robspar gmail. All right. Thanks everyone. Bye now.